So if you're looking to optimize your Tarkov settings to give you the best performance possible, you have found the right video. I just want to add this quick disclaimer to the start of the video, just so you guys understand my perspective on some of these things before we get started. Uh, so first things first, I want to make it clear that the settings that I use are not necessarily the best for performance, and I will discuss them setting by setting as I move down the line just because I like some eye candy with my gameplay. I will also tell you the settings that will give you the most performance, but I want to make sure you guys understand that I'm coming from a mix of graphical fidelity and performance perspective. All right, so now I'm on streets, and as you guys can see by the performance performance overlay that I forgot to put up here, um, we're getting about 100 and what is that, 117, 118 FPS uh, using the settings that I have here and here. Now, I will explain all the settings uh, starting from left to right, so game, graphics, and I'll probably go to post effects briefly as well, and then to sound, just so you guys can understand why I'm choosing each setting. And I also, of course, have videos posted about a bunch of these topics already, um, so I'm going to condense it down as much as I can. So first things first, uh, automatic RAM cleaner, you should only use this if you don't have standby list set up. I highly recommend using the standby list cleaner instead of this setting. It's really up to you if you want to try this and see if it works, but really I don't recommend using this. Just use the standby list cleaner that I recommend in one of my other videos instead. I have only used physical cores checked simply because the game runs better for me in certain scenarios with this setting. It just ensures that the game is only running on physical cores. And if you don't know what physical cores are, long story short, it is the actual amount of cores in your CPU. Sometimes CPUs can have two threads or logical processors attached to a single core, and this forces the game to only use one of those channels that's linked directly with the physical core on your CPU, and this can sometimes help improve performance. So with this setting, it's one of those settings, you'll probably hear me say this a couple times throughout the video, that I would check and uncheck and just test and see whatever works best for you. Something that has helped a lot of people is Process Lasso, and I do have an older video on that if you want to check that out, but I will refresh that video pretty soon, so uh, subscribe if you're looking forward to that. Secondarily, moving to the big kahuna graphics. Uh, first thing I'm going to address here is screen mode. A lot of people suggest full screen. I just like borderless because I like to be able to tab out back and forth really quickly. It's your call. I've tested it several times. I really can't notice a difference in terms of performance that's even notable. But if you find more performance in full screen, like some people do, then just leave it on full screen if you don't tab out and be, you'll be fine. Extra quality, if you have the VRAM for it, just set it to high and it's going to make the game look a lot better for you. If you want the absolute most performance, medium may fetch you a couple frames. I didn't even bother to test this because most of the time, Adding the texture quality to high just makes the game look so much better and just gives you a more enjoyable experience, at least in my opinion. But if you really want the best performance, I would suggest medium, just because it helps maintain at least some of the graphical fidelity, fidelity with the game. Shadow quality should always be low, don't even bother going any higher, it's not worth your time. Now the big one that I've seen some contention about is object LOD quality. And for that, I did bring up a benchmark here. I just did these this morning to show the difference between the different LOD settings. You can see right here, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can. Uh, we got LOD 4, LOD 3 is down here because I tested the middle after going <laughs> down to LOD 2. So you can see the difference in performance between these three. And actually, let me just reorganize these real quick for you. So now it scales linearly 4, 3, and 2 down here. And as you can see, the performance difference isn't really too noticeable between them. There's about a 5 FPS difference in between each tier, for me at least. So if I were you to just reduce the amount of pop-in, if you want just a little bit of niceness with your game and not get distracted by all things popping in, I would go with LOD3. You still net at least a little bit of FPS, and it's only, um, what's the right word, de-rendering the objects that are further away from you, sort of out of your range of vision for the most part. But if you want the absolute highest performance, LOD2 is where it's at. And the one thing that doesn't net me any extra performance is overall visibility. If I crank this down to 400 here, I'm getting maybe an extra frame or two. You remember before I was running about 117, 118, I'm getting 119 to 120. If you want absolute highest performance, you can set this to 400, but I would not recommend that just because it may impede your performance uh, as far as playing the game goes. So I like to run this at a 1500, 
just because it doesn't degrade your performance that much and it allows you to see things much further away. Next in here we have anti-aliasing. If you set this to off, you are a weirdo. TAA is what you should have it set to all the time because if I set it to off, it looks like I built this using pixel art in Minecraft. It is absolutely disgusting. I would never recommend anybody to go off with anti-aliasing even though it Scans does not here. No way, man. I hit the wrong button. Even though it can net you uh, extra frame or two, it is absolutely vile and FXAA as well just does not, does not help. So I would recommend TAA personally, and if you really want the highest fidelity, you can go with TAA high. It does decrease your FPS maybe by a frame or two, um, but you do get the higher fidelity that TAA high offers uh, versus regular TAA. It's not much, but it's something. Um, it is noticeable with the trees sometimes, but it's really your call in terms of which one you run. I will continue to run TAA. Next, resampling. I'm not even going to discuss this. Do not, if you're experiencing, for example, low GPU usage, do not lower this. It will not help you. It makes your game look like shit, and there are better alternatives that are right below it, which I will now discuss. If you are on an NVIDIA 20 series or higher GPU, NVIDIA DLSS may be your best bet if you like how it looks. Uh, for example, DLSS quality, just to give you guys a uh, field of view, uh, this is on 1440p and this is what it looks like. It should be 1440p in the render as well. I forgot last time, by the way, with that upload, I fucked it up. Uh, but this is 1440p now with DLSS quality. And it looks fine, it looks a little soft, it looks kind of weird. Personally, regardless of GPU, I recommend FSR 2.1 because this on quality mode looks fucking fantastic and it also nets you a decent perform performance boost Excuse me, in the GPU bound scenarios. As you can see, it didn't boost my FPS much just because I'm in a CPU bind right now. But in GPU bound scenarios, you're going to notice an incredible boost in performance for little to no downgrade in terms of visual quality. I have my sharpness set to one right now, and I think the game looks absolutely wonderful with these settings. If I was in a heavy GPU bind, I would definitely use FSR 2.1 because at the higher quality settings, I think it looks perfect. I would not recommend using FSR 1.0 because this is a image scaling technology. It is not a temporal upscaler like FSR 2.1 or NVIDIA DLSS. So using FSR 1.0 will not net you more performance. And if it does, it'll be very minimal, but for an awful amount of loss to your image fidelity. So I would stick with FSR 2.1 in almost every single case. Like I said before, if you are CPU bottlenecked, then using an upscaler will not increase your performance, so you need to make sure you are not CPU bottlenecked before using these settings. So just keep that in mind. For HBAO and SSR, uh, this is ambient occlusion and screen space reflections. Pretty much deals with the... Uh, oh, I left the upscaler on, goddammit. Pretty much deals with the little shadows that you're seeing around my gun here. Oh, uh, the shadows in the chamber. Uh, and then if I take out the mag here, you'll see there's like the shadows in my hand and stuff like that. That's what HBO offers. If I set HBO off, you'll see the difference here. It's pretty noticeable. I think the shadows on that stuff look absolutely fantastic. It does chew away about 10 of my FPS, but honestly, I don't care just because of how fucking good it looks. If you want the maximum performance, but still want to get a little bit of the shadows, then I would set to max performance. You'll still get a little bit of the shadows in the hand and stuff like that. It doesn't look as good as high, um, not really close, but as you can see, it doesn't take away that many frames, if at all, and you'll still get at least a little bit of that shadowing. The HBO makes the hands look a lot better, and that's why I stick to high, uh, just because the color saturation, everything like that looks perfect with this ambient occlusion. Uh, and if you can spare the frames, HBO is definitely one of those settings that I recommend cranking up just because it makes the game look fantastic. <clears throat> That's the gods signaling me to uh, warn you that SSR is a performance hog, uh, especially with the higher settings. But the reason I have it set too high in my settings is for the reflections on my gun when it rains. That's literally it. That's the only reason I use it. Um, it can suck some of the frames from you. If I set this to off really quick, you'd be able to see the difference. Um, there's no puddles or anything like that on the ground. Um, but it can net you some extra frame rate. I just think that the reflections are worth it. 
because I've played on a low-end rig and I want to experience just some higher quality visuals once. So that's why I'm rocking with SSR on high. I would not recommend Ultra because that can absolutely suck your frame rate. So if you want the candy, go with high. If you don't want the candy, you can stick to low. If you still want a little bit of reflection without much uh, performance impact, you see there are still some puddles on the ground, but it's definitely less of a performance impact. Or if you don't want them at all, you can set it to off if it's distracting for you or if you just want as much frame rate as possible. But just keep in mind, low doesn't take up that much and it does allow you to get at least a little bit of that eye candy. Now to anisotropic filtering, as you can see right now, I have it set to per texture. That does take away at least like a frame or two for me. It does help with these oblique edges on the textures here. You can see if I set this to off really quick. It, those textures on the ground are a little bit more blurry, especially the further you get away. And having anisotropic filtering set to per texture helps alleviate that a little bit with those oblique angles and makes the textures a bit more clear. So I would recommend setting it to per texture if you just want a bit more clarity in your game. Having it on does help at least a little bit more with those oblique angles, but it does chew away a lot more at your FPS. So if you just want the mix of performance and visual fidelity, set the per texture. If you want the most performance, off. Now something that surprised me in these uh, settings here is NVIDIA Reflex. Having this set to on plus boost can actually decrease your performance. You see right now I'm sitting at 112 to 113 FPS. And then when I set this to simply on, you go up to 120, 122. That's an almost 10 FPS boost right there. And the reason being is, I don't know. I have no idea why this is boosting my FPS, but from my research, I originally thought that the boost was just making sure that your GPU was always throttled up a bit more when playing the game, ready to receive frames from the CPU. So I'm not quite sure what the deal is with that, but if you want the best performance but still having that low latency feature of NVIDIA Reflex, I would just set that to on and not on plus boost. These right here are the two benchmarks that I did for Reflex uh, on plus boost in this, and I forgot to write it. On plus boost is there, and then simply on is here, and you can, oh wait, did I delete it? Well, I deleted it, I'm gonna post it, I'm gonna post it right there, but you can see the FPS difference was about 10 there, so that was pretty good in terms of getting a boost in performance, and I'm gonna be rocking on from here on out. Can the thunder stop? Now sharpness, it does decrease your performance a little bit, it's not too much, but does decrease it by like a frame or two. I like having that extra sharpness to the game. I think it makes it a lot more crisp. I set mine to one. I think this is a personal preference sort of thing. It really depends on what you like and how sharp you like the game. So just set this to whatever you want. The one setting that I have covered in detail in another video is MIP streaming. This setting, I would definitely recommend testing, turning it on and seeing if this helps your performance at all. It has helped me quite a lot. And you can see that in another video that I posted. Uh, it is on my channel, you'll see the MIP streaming video, video, a more recent of the two, and there I explain what it does and why these, why this setting has been revolutionary in terms of uh, performance, especially if you have the SSD to run it. But yeah, test this, I would recommend trying to push these as high as you can, but you'll see my opinion in that video. And for the rest of these settings, turn them off, you don't need them. Z blur, you could have on if you really want, just to make it blurry around the, uh, the gun here depending on when you're you know like aiming and stuff like that i don't like those settings i set them off and they can chew up performance anyway so i just turn all those settings off post fx the biggest things that chew up performance are clarity and these two sharpening sliders here i have them on because as you can see this is what my game looks like with them on and this is what it looks like with them off so there's a really really big difference in terms of clarity and vibrancy with the game and that's why i like these post effects settings because it's really easy to adjust it to my liking and get the best looking game that I possibly can. So you can copy these settings if you want. I tried to reduce the amount of issues in terms of performance with these. Um, try not to push them too high. You can always lower these a little bit if you think they're too much. But I have another video talking about that as well. I know I just keep linking you to other videos, but I'm trying to keep this as you know short as possible. So you can copy these settings, but just keep in mind clarity Luma Sharpen and Adaptive Sharpen can suck FPS, so be careful with those settings when you're pushing them up.
And then finally, another big kahuna talking point in the Tarkov community is binaural audio. Test it on versus off. It's just another one of those settings. Test on versus off in, in, in streets, in customs, any map that has binaural audio, and see if you notice a significant impact. I didn't notice a significant impact with it on. I have just left it off until BSG makes like official statement about the state of the audio. And if we should continue to run this on, I have just simply left it off for now. I may turn it on once or twice just to test it and see. But for now, I leave it off. And my recommendation right now would be for you to do the same if you notice that you have had a performance issue with the setting turned on. If you have any questions regarding anything I said in this video, make sure to leave it in the comments below or ask me on Discord. I try to respond to as many as I can. I do miss some sometimes, and I apologize for that. But if you do have a question, try to leave it in the comments or in Discord, and I'll try to get to it whenever I can. Appreciate your support with the channel recently. We're almost to 1,000 subs. It's pretty crazy, but also pretty epic. And uh, I'll try to pump out as much content as I can to help you guys out. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, all of that stuff. I will try to continue to keep posting content um, whenever I can. And I really appreciate the support. And I hope you guys have an excellent day. This is Clem. Walking out. Later.